videos than Ramon and 160. First demonstration of how to build a canyon vault. Partition at face side, Catalan tradition, with bricks of manual manufacture, placed with fast cement and with the help of a truss with lower curve, forming arcs with discontinuous joints. Video created and owned by Ramon Guarda y Parera, official traditional bricklayer first construction technician, member of the National Network Teachers of the Building. First part, step by step. This is the structure where I'm going to make the vaults. I'll do it as a first demonstration since I'm planning to do more. I have prepared the sides to put them next to the wall. Now you can see the way of putting them. Here we are placing this with a plaster to support the wood. We have to try to put them lower than the height that it's supposed to go. So when placing the formwork, it is regularized with wedges. Place at the height of where the thin bricks follow the curvature of the formwork. How it can be seen in the next images, now it's all about fixing it well, and the woods have to be completely on level. I already have the scaffolding ready to start the vault. The formwork is already prepared. As I said before, regularize the height with wooden wedges because you have to ensure that the fine bricks follow the same curvature as the false work. These are the thin 1.5 cm bricks that I will use in the first layer of the vault. As they are manufactured manually and we are placing them with quick setting cement, they must be quite humid. If by any circumstances, at the moment of putting them, they are super wet, you can dry them with a cloth. Because if they are wet, the water makes them a layer and it doesn't have a good adhesion. Very important, for the construction of the vault, you have to always keep in mind that the walls or support points are resistant enough to withstand the thrust of the vault. In the scaffolding, it's ready all the material planned or necessary to start the vault. Before kneading the cement, what I'm going to do is wet the wall and the supports of the fine bricks. This is the quick setting cement that I will use for the construction of the first layer and part of the second vault. A unique material in Spain from mines and manufactured in Catalonia by Samen Cullet S.A. First, I throw water into the drawer. Then, the cement with the paddle and I stir slightly so there are no lumps. It is important to make the kneading as quickly as possible because all the time wasted kneading, you have it less for the use of the cement, do the fast setting. The drawer has to be literally clean and the cement collected along the base. Demonstration of how the cement is spread on the thin brick. Taking it with the free hand, you start with the narrow edge. Always thinking about the position you have in the future vault. Then, fastly, you continue in the elongated part. 
Pay attention to the position of the palette with the thin brick. A picture is worth more than a thousand words. It is a very important task that the operator knows how to extend the cement on the brick. I repeat the operation and recommend it if you do not have experience in this task to practice several times before starting this work to make it easier for you. I put quick cement in the groove where the first thin brick will be supported. As I have already mentioned, this is a partitioned vault composed of several joint arches, but with the discontinuous joint between them. I begin to start the cement on the first piece to support it on the cement of the groove. The bricks have to be fresh, but not excessively wet, and thus they start better. They are given small blows against the wall or points of union to make the addition easier, grouting with the palette and holding a little with the free hand while setting the cement. Sometimes, as you can see later, small amounts of dry cement are thrown into the joint and hold fast. It is necessary to supervise from underneath that the thin bricks follow the curvature of the two forms. In the formwork on the side of the wall, the thin bricks goes underneath, it's not above how in the first one. It is necessary to go with great precision when placing the first thin bricks. If the stakeout is not done well, we can have problems during all the work. I have already calculated that at the other end, I will finish with half elongated. I will do the whole row. Normally with the walls and the arches, we start on each side and close in the center. But the first layer, as its face view, I did do the whole roll to avoid a possible small key piece. Starting at this tip and finishing at the end because that fits better and the bricks are spread evenly. There is the possibility of working two officers. When starting the vault, one makes the first layer and the other starts with the second side. When the first line of the first layer is already done, as the bricks are already distributed, you start at the center and the two operators can work on both sides. When folding, as you will see in the successive videos, you should do it as coming from the ends, because it's where it has more pressure, the weight of the second layer, and it's made of 3.5 thick bricks. I keep placing the thin bricks, giving it the blow that I sometimes call the coup of grace. When giving a small blow, it fits well with the first, sorry, with the brick itself. The fast cement must also be collected so that there are no many burrs of material, because the fast cement, when it starts to set, you cannot add more water and return kneading. The material is already lost, so what you have to do is have a container to throw it away. To be able to continue, I take out the wood that supports the formwork. It is already fixed with the weight of the same bricks that I have put before. Notice that when I put the piece, I slightly tap it with the palette against the wall and the bricks that are placed. I pick up the cement before releasing it. The thin bricks of the first layer can be cast, only if it's an interior work since the worst enemy of this material is the humidity, even the environmental. The fast setting cement has the advantage that can be used indoors and outdoors. Although it's not very frequent, thin bricks can also be placed with mortar, either lime or Portland cement, but it has the disadvantage that you need more forms and then do the second layer. It is already done when it's the first row, or the simple one, in Catalan terms, sanzillat, and it is the first thread that goes in the vault. This is the main one, the one that acts as a mold or template for the successive layers that are the ones that make the effort. I'm going to take out the template that's stuck on the wall, that has been very useful as a guide in the placement of the thin bricks. We have commanded before not to take it as a reference because it can be assembled without a template. Normally, it is done an edge or a line on the wall to guide the bricks.
Before continuing with the first layer, I will start the second layer and try not to match the joints with the ones of the first layer. To avoid it, I'll start from the wall with half pieces of bricks of 3.3 thickness, 28, 13.5, 3.3. In Catalan terms, it's called Mao. This first row will be placed with a cement mortar of fast setting at a proportion or dosage of one by one, one of cement and one of sand. I already begun the kneading with cement. It can also be done with other materials, but if there is a hurry, if you want to go faster, you can take out the formwork. It would hold without doing the second layer, but the way I'm doing it, it's safer. Before putting mortar, you have to wet the area well, and if it can be done with the time head, much better. Then you can see the system of placing the second layer or second thread. As you can see, I'm putting salmon mortar quick setting. If you didn't notice, to knead, I used water from a carfi or a small container that was mixed with the retardant to the latest setting time, about 10 minutes. That will be the time I will have to use it. The mortar with the retardant can be used as Portland cement or something similar. The advantage is that it has a faster setting than the Portland cement. It can also be done with mixed mortar. I start to place a half but full width. As I finish the first layer with elongator half when putting the half brick. Rub with the mortar, leaving between the first layer and the second a joint of 8 to 10 millimeters of thickness of mortar to have a better resistance in the entire vault. When putting the paste on the hearth of the first layer, it is advisable with the pallet to bring material to the edge of the existing brick. With this system, when placing the brick, the board is full. I'm choosing the bricks because there are some of them that are excessively wet, and when standing, it drains the water fastly. If they are very wet, the same water of the bricks does not allow to adhere any kind of I have to break half of the half brick for the beginning of the second layer at the other end because the brick that is placed in the first layer is complete and you have to avoid that the joints concede before placing the mortar. It is necessary to moisten the base to improve the adhesion. I am placing the mortar in the area where I'm going to place the half brick. I am distributing it so that when you place the piece in the mortar and press it, it overflows. I pick up with a palette and check if all the space is filled and throw the excess at the base of the next half brick. I put more mortar with the palette in the base and following the same technique, I place the piece of brick Checking that is not excessively humid. I continue placing 3.3 thin bricks with fast setting salmon mortar. And here you can see the details I mentioned earlier of the system of placing of the pieces. Placing the mortar, moving it a bit on the first layer and placing the half brick overflowing the mortar through the joints and sides. Then you pick up the remaining material with the palette and then place it onto the next base of the next piece and so on. It is very important, I will never get tired of saying, that the area where you have to place the brick must be well moistened. The thickness of the mortar of the joints 
between the first and the second layer cannot be less than one centimeter. I am already in the center, about to close, without placing one last piece and the key piece. I put the motor well distributed with the palette and the piece making a small vibration to overflow the motor without placing the last piece. I take the measure and I break the piece with a palette. It is a little bit hard, in, but in the end I can cut it, leaving space for the motor. I put a little more mortar and then the piece by pressing with the hand and the palette to leave it at the same height. I reassemble and cover all the holes, collect the excess mortar to place it in the drawer or in the bucket. The important thing is to be clean and without mortar remaining. To be able to continue, I have to change the position of the template or the formwork. I remove the wedges of each end so that the template is loose and in this way it is easier to remove it and to place it later. I take the template with both hands to move it forward. I put it at the same distance of the length of the thin brick, checking the two ends. With the wedges, I raise it to the height indicated by the inclination of the brick with the template. It is necessary to verify that the inclination of the brick is the correct one to have a good finish. End of the first part. Video created and owned by Ramon Guadaparera. Year 2019 video number 160 from my collection. Instruction videos 0832 Barcelona, Catalonia, Spain.